All right, so the fitness industry is currently having a meltdown because someone with apparently unlimited free time and a law degree decided to spend what must have been weeks reading Mike Israeltel's PhD thesis from 2013. And let me tell you, the results are absolutely hilarious. For those of you who haven't been keeping up with the drama because you were too busy actually training like normal people, here's what happened. Some guy downloaded Mike's dissertation, read all 140 pages of it, and basically concluded that it's so bad it wouldn't pass at a real university. We're talking impossible data, copy-pasted sections, hundreds of typos, and research that basically proved that strong people are strong. Groundbreaking stuff. Now, I watched this entire hour-plus video, and I gotta say, it's the most elaborate your mom joke I've ever seen. This man really woke up one day and said, you know what, I'm going to destroy someone's entire academic career from 12 years ago because I'm bored. That's some supervillain energy right there, and I kind of respect it. But here's where it gets absolutely ridiculous. The core finding of Mike's PhD research was essentially this. Athletes who are leaner, stronger, and more muscular perform better than athletes who are fatter, weaker, and less muscular. And I'm sitting here thinking, you needed a PhD to figure this out? My guy, I could have told you this in a McDonald's parking lot for free. It's like writing a 140-page dissertation proving that eating food makes you less hungry, or that sleeping makes you less tired, or that watching fitness drama instead of training is why you look like shit. These are not revolutionary insights. These are things we call obvious to anyone with a functioning brain. The best part is Mike admits this throughout his own thesis. He's literally saying, yeah, this confirms what everyone already knew over and over again. So the question isn't whether the thesis is bad. The question is, how the hell did this get approved in the first place? Like, where were the examiners? Were they asleep? Were they as drinking buddies? Did they just see student who can bench press a Honda Civic and give him a pass? Now, let's talk about the actually funny part of all this. The video goes through every single error in painful detail. Wrong citations, missing spaces between words, tables with data showing that some athletes were apparently negative 1.6 years old. Negative age, people. These Division I athletes hadn't been born yet, but they were still competing. That's some Benjamin Button shit right there. There are athletes in these tables who are supposedly 3.49 meters tall, which is taller than any human who has ever lived, and also athletes who are negative 6 centimeters tall, meaning they're somehow shorter than not existing. But hey, maybe Mike was just studying a very diverse sample size that included time travelers and quantum entities. The standard deviations are so fucked up that according to the math, some of these athletes weighed less than a house cat or more than an offensive lineman riding another offensive lineman. And nobody caught this. Not Mike not his supervisor, not the examiners. It just sailed through because apparently at East Tennessee State University, proofreading is optional. But wait, it gets better. Mike has this whole section where he talks about a low metrically scaled peak force, like it's some sophisticated measurement technique. Sounds impressive, right? Very scientific, except it's literally just relative strength, force divided by body weight with a fancy name slapped on it. It's like calling water hydroosmotic liquid and then claiming it's superior to regular water. My guy, it's the same thing. You just made it sound complicated. Throughout the thesis, Mike takes simple concepts and wraps them in so much jargon that you need a decoder ring to understand what he's saying. At one point, he defines fitness characteristics as theoretical constructs that obviate the input of sport-specific technique. Brother, just say, physical traits measured separately from skill. You don't need to sound like you swallowed a thesaurus that was having an allergic reaction. Now, here's where I'm gonna say something controversial. I don't actually care that Mike's PhD thesis from 2013 was sloppy. You know why? Because none of this matters to whether his current training advice is good. Renaissance periodization has helped thousands of people build muscle. The app works, the diet principles work, the training methods produce results. That's what actually matters. But, and this is a big but, if you spend years flexing your PhD in every video, using it to shut down critics, slapping PhD approved on protein powders, and constantly reminding everyone that you're Dr. Mike and therefore smarter than them, then yeah, someone's eventually going to check your homework. And if your homework turns out to have athletes who are negative years old and shorter than zero centimeters, that's a you problem. You can't build your entire brand on I have a PhD so I'm right and you're wrong and then act surprised when someone examines that PhD and finds out it's held together with duct tape and prayers. That's not how this works. You invited this scrutiny the moment you made your degree your personality. 
the guy who made this video really said, oh, you want to talk about credentials? Let me introduce you to my friend, the Melbourne University Academic Standards. That's some calculated pettiness that I have to admire. He didn't just criticize the thesis, he went through it with the thoroughness of someone checking their ex's new partner's social media at 3 a.m. Every typo, every formatting error, every impossible statistic, cataloged for prosperity. And look, I get it, Mike probably wrote this thesis while training for competitions, coaching clients, and doing all the other stuff PhD students do. He was probably exhausted, stressed, and just trying to get it done. That's relatable. We've all submitted work that wasn't our best because we were overwhelmed and behind on deadlines. The difference is most of us don't then spend the next decade using that work as proof of our intellectual superiority. Here's the thing nobody wants to talk about. Not all PhDs are the same. A PhD in theoretical physics from MIT is not the same as a PhD in sports science from East Tennessee State. That's not elitism, that's just reality. Standards vary wildly between institutions and fields. Some PhDs represent genuinely groundbreaking research that advances human knowledge. Others represent, I showed up for long enough and confirmed something everyone already knew. And before anyone gets mad, this isn't unique to sports science. Every field has programs that are more rigorous and programs that are less rigorous. Every discipline has researchers doing world-changing work and researchers who are just punching a clock. The problem is we treat all PhDs as if they're equivalent and they're just not. The fitness industry is especially bad about this because it's so desperate for legitimacy. Everyone wants to be taken seriously. So everyone's out here collecting letters to put after their names like their Pokemon. PhD, CSC, NASM, ACE, whatever alphabet suit makes them sound authoritative. And most people see those letters and just assume the person knows what they're talking about. But here's a secret. Some of the best coaches I know have zero formal education. And some of the worst advice I've ever seen has come from people with every certification imaginable. The letters don't make you right. They just mean you went through a process. Whether that process actually made you good at what you do is a completely separate question. So what's the actual lesson from all this drama? It's simple. Judge ideas by their merit, not by who's saying them. If someone gives you training advice, don't ask if they have a PhD, ask if the advice makes sense and produces results. If someone sells you a supplement, don't check if it's PhD approved, check if there's actual evidence it works. Credentials are a starting point for investigation, not the end of it. They tell you that someone went through a formal education process, but they don't tell you if that person is good at their job, honest in their claims, or even remembers what they learned. I've met PhDs who couldn't coach their way out of a paper bag, and I've met high school dropouts who understand muscle growth better than most researchers. Now, I know what you're thinking. Zerk, doesn't this whole video make you a hypocrite? You're sitting here judging Mike for his thesis while admitting credentials don't matter. And yeah, fair point, but here's the difference. I'm not saying Mike's training advice is wrong because his thesis was sloppy. I'm saying if you make your PhD the centerpiece of your brand, don't be surprised when someone actually reads it. Mike's been out here for years going, I'm smarter than almost every coach, maybe every coach, and I know more about physiology than they do, and if you think you know more than me, just write it off. That's a very bold position to take, and it requires very solid credentials to back it up. When those credentials turn out to be less impressive than advertised, that's not people being unfair. That's consequences. The funniest part of this whole situation is how avoidable it was. If Mike had just presented himself as a knowledgeable coach with solid training principles backed by research, none of this would matter. Nobody would care about his thesis if he wasn't constantly using his PhD as a weapon in arguments. But when you build a fortress out of credentials, you better make sure those credentials can withstand a siege. This whole drama also reveals something kind of sad about the fitness community. We care way more about tearing people down than building ourselves up. Like there are people who will spend hours dissecting every frame of this video, analyzing every criticism of Mike's thesis, picking sides in this academic beef, but won't spend 30 minutes actually training. That's backwards as hell. Instead of arguing about whether Mike's dissertation had proper APA formatting, maybe go do some squats. Instead of debating whether his research was original enough, maybe track your protein intake. Instead of obsessing over fitness industry drama, maybe work on the thing you actually have control over, which is your own physique. Just a thought. But who am I kidding? Drama is way more entertaining than training, which is why this video will probably get more views than any of my actual training content. You degenerates love this stuff. 
Someone gets exposed, everyone piles on, we all feel superior for five minutes, then we move on to the next controversy. It's the circle of life in fitness YouTube. So here's my final take. Mike's thesis probably shouldn't have been approved. The guy who exposed it clearly has way too much time on his hands, but also kinda did a fitness community a service. Mike should probably stop leading with his PhD in every argument. And all of you should stop treating credentials as the final word on anything and start thinking critically about the actual information you're consuming. Also, maybe proofread your work before submitting it, especially if you're gonna spend the next decade telling everyone how smart you are based on that work. Just saying. Now stop watching drama and go train. Your muscles don't care about anyone's PhD, they only care whether you're actually doing the work. I'm Zerk, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll probably be talking about some other completely insane fitness controversy because this industry is absolutely unhinged. Peace out, Gaines Goblins.